यस सर आवाज आ रही है ना यस सर अभी जस्ट मैंने हैंडआउट जो है आप लोगों को शेयर किया है गूगल क्लासरूम के थ्रू ओके सर हाँ उसको जरा डाउनलोड कर लेना और मुझे लेट मी शेयर इट स्क्रीन दिख रही है यस yes, सर हम्म सो दिस इज द कोर्स डिजाइन अगेंस्ट फ्रैक्चर एंड फटीक ओके बेसिकली वी विल बी टॉकिंग हियर फ्रैक्चर फ्रैक्चर मैकेनिक्स ओके यस सर एनी आइडिया अबाउट फ्रैक्चर मैकेनिक्स आपने पढ़ा हुआ आई थिंक डिजाइन में कहीं पे वट इज दैट और नो आइडिया फटीक फटीक तो पढ़ा होगा आप लोगों ने yes, sir. फटीक किया होगा है ना सर इट इज द इट इज द प्रोपोगेशन ऑफ क्रैक्स इन द मटेरियल हम्म बिल्कुल यस इट इज द प्रोपोगेशन ऑफ क्रैक गुड यू नो दैट व्हेन वी स्टडीड मैकेनिक्स ऑफ सॉलिड और थ्योरी ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी इन व्हिच यू यू हैव डन इन द लास्ट सेमेस्टर so there you might have talked about certain assumptions okay what assumptions were made for the theory of elasticity course sir isotropic material homogeneous isotropic homogeneous material ha huh? yes sir and uh, uh, the prismatic area or if uh, there is a hole then the uh, hole is very less uh, than their boundary width hmm? material sir uh, mostly we uh, study for prismatic area prismatic bar hmm or area uh, but uh, if uh, there is a hole in prismatic area if we make a hole and uh, to the size of the hole uh, will be very less than the width of the uh, width of the uh, राइट so that was the uh, basic assumption so the meaning is that uh, like uh, there there was uh, considered that uh, it was considered that there there are no voids there there are no cracks there are no gap in between the material right yes sir दिस इज द जम्पन ओके अगर मान लीजिए ये मेटीरियल है आपका और इसके ऊपर लोड लग रहा है है ना और इसके ऊपर कुछ बाउंड्री कंडीशन है इस तरह से राइट right? और ये फिक्स है मान लीजिए यहाँ पे लाइक दिस ओके तो जो है ऐसा नहीं है कि मतलब यू नो ड्यूरिंग डिफॉर्मेशन और बिफोर डिफॉर्मेशन कि यहाँ बीच में कहीं पे कोई इस तरह से क्रैक है एंड ओके सो इस तरह का जर्शन हम लेके चलते मेटीरियल वॉज कंटिन्यूस राइट यस सर 
so because of that we could write uh, you know the chassis strain displacement as function of uh, special coordinates okay yes sir so this is what the basic assumption was okay but basically uh, material may have some kind of discontinuity that may be in terms of uh, a crack or uh, maybe small hole okay so so that may be present okay so the uh, the, the fracture mechanics start with the assumption that uh, it assumes that cracks are present cracks are present right yes sir so based on this assumption fracture mechanics starts okay so then then we talk about okay if crack is present then uh, what is the criticality of that crack whether it is a critical crack what will happen if we load we apply load whether it will uh, remain of the same size or it will uh, uh, propagate it will like it will increase in size right and uh, what will happen and what are the critical condition under which we will say that yes now it is and now it is uh, uh, like it is going to cause uh, the failure of the component okay like uh, like the crack initiation crack propagation and then fracture so the critical point is where uh, like uh, you know once it uh, start propagating then it become difficult to arrest that propagation so this is the basic assumption of fracture mechanics clear if crack is present then we will try to uh, determine what is going to happen now whether it will remain as it is or it will increase in its length or it will propagate okay that that is what we 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 talk okay yes sir so in this we will be learning the concept and physical and mathematical principle of fracture mechanics and uh, you will be taught the basic principle of lefm linear elastic fracture mechanics okay so where we assume that you know uh, you know near to the crack you know you you might have done you might have studied that uh, near to the crack near to the crack okay where it is very sharp uh, stress uh, are going to be raised to very high value okay If the stresses are raised, then uh, it may cause uh, the plastic effect. Plastic zone would be there near to this crack tip, crack tip. And if that plastic zone size is small, then uh, we can talk about that linear elastic fracture mechanics when the plastic zone size is less. But when it is uh, big size, then uh, we we will talk about no linear elastic plastic fracture mechanics. okay and yes. uh, then we will be talking about how to characterize characterizing parameters various fracture characterizing parameters okay in this uh, we will be talking about stress in intensity factor uh, energy release rate j integral crack tip opening displacement stress and strain fields around a crack tip so this is what we will be learning okay so you will also learn apply the concept of fpm to milling material and uh, design of structural component considering the presence of flaws okay so so this is what we will be talking so as a result of this course you will be able to you know understand and explain the basic concept physical and mathematical principle of fracture mechanics 
you will be able you will have the clear idea and uh, you know you will have a uh, the basic idea of principle of lefm and nl uh, efm okay epfm not not this and epfm that is elastoplastic fracture mechanics okay and uh, we'll be talking about different fracture characterizing parameters okay and then we will apply the concept of fracture mechanics and in addition to this we'll be talking about something on fatigue uh, uh, also okay fatigue so these are the contents okay this is the book i will be following prashant kumar it is a very small book okay but very very important book okay element of fracture mechanic tata magra in publishing company okay prashant kumar he is a uh, you know former professor uh, of iit kanpur ओके एंड ये एक है बुक दूसरे एंडरसन ओके टी एल एंडरसन ये अपने आप में पूरा ग्रंथ है फ्रैक्चर मैकेनिक्स का सो फंडामेंटल एंड एप्लीकेशन ओके इन एडिशन टू दैट यू नो मे बी वन और टू मोर बुक्स आर देयर लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल आई एम मैं हियर नॉट हियर आई विल टेल यू दोज बुक्स ऑल्सो लाइक देर आर अदर बुक्स ऑल्सो which will be talking about fatigue also so there is some part given in this prashant kumar book on fatigue design okay so that will be talking okay ye this is the lecture plan lecture delivery plan so as i said most of the time we will be going through this book only and the evolution scheme would be same as you will like you will be having midterm exam of 30% it may be closed book open book similarly you will have some assignment project or what something okay and then you will have midterm exam so this is about this about the handout of this okay <clears throat> so let me let me start this so let me start the introduction to this course okay uh, you you should know that uh, where uh, like before this world war 2 world war 2 so there was no existence of fracture mechanics the fracture mechanics course came into picture only after world war 2 okay and uh, if we look at the historical background of uh, <laughs> this prior to the industrial revolution before 19th century <coughs> the primary construction material were timber bricks and mortar that that you know if you look at the history okay so they were uh, relatively brittle material and they were only used for large structures and they were usually designed to be loaded in compression compression and you should know that uh, structures loaded in compressions are uh, stable okay as compared to you know under tensile loading and uh, because of this like you know you may be knowing that many of the structures they have lasted for many centuries like if you will talk about pyramids in egypt so they were loaded they are loaded in compression and because of that they could last for a long time but later on when the industrial revolution happens because of you know mass production of iron and steel then ductile construction material removed the uh, earlier restriction on design and then um, then then structures were also made which were carrying tensile stresses in addition to compression compressive loading okay but but because of this change 
some some problems had happened okay because <coughs> so because of this change <coughs> this change brought some problems associated with the tensile loaded structures okay like for example i have shown here uh, the upper one that you can see here it, it is made of bricks and mortar okay and they are loaded in compression right but at the below in the below figure that is the tower bridge in the london it was built in 1894 and it was made using tensile loaded steel support girders okay so a steel structure would fail uh, unexpectedly at stresses well below the anticipated tensile strength okay so like this was uh, this this failure of steel structure uh, was uh, caused by stresses which are well below the anticipated tensile strength and one of the very famous example in the history is the boston molasses disaster boston molasses disaster right you can see here it is also called great molasses flood and this actually happened the this is caused by this was caused by the rupture of a molasses tank in the boston right and it happened in january 1919 and which caused spilling of 2.3 million us gallon approximately 8700 meter cube meter cube of the molasses okay so there was a uh, rupture of the molasses tank and because of that there was a flood okay and uh, that molasses uh, that that flowed flew with uh, you know very high speed 56 km per hour and it resulted in uh, 21 deaths and it also caused injuries to 150 people and uh, in addition there were other you know property damage property loss so this was the very big disaster so this happened because of the you know rupture of the molasses tank okay uh, so there after what the designers did so they made use of <coughs> high factor of safety uh, uh, up to 10 or more to avoid these seemingly random failure okay so this was the only way to do to avoid this kind of failure okay just make use of higher factor of safety but you know that a higher factor of safety would result in uh, it would result in uh, the bulky structure okay and it it, it 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 is actually not economical when we we make use of higher factor of safety right yes sir okay so this is the fourth disaster that took place okay <laughs> the field of fracture mechanics was not uh, present prior to world war 2 okay and you know world war 2 happened 1939 to 1945 okay there was no uh, fracture mechanics field but cracks were uh, thought to be small at that time and they were considered to be insignificant okay and they were uh, considered not to of threat mm. They they were not a threat to large structure like ship and aircraft. But what happened? What during the World War, and for a short time thereafter also, many ships and aircraft failed in sudden. Okay, and in very in very in uh, explicable ways, right? 
so this this happened actually during the world war and after uh, you know after world war 2 okay so many many failure happens so it was eventually determined that failure were in the fact caused by crack in these metal structures okay so this is what was found after investigation that the culprit was the cracks okay cracks so then people started thinking ki how how to how to you know design under these kind of conditions so then only the field of fracture mechanics came into existence and uh, there are few big disasters so that actually caused the researchers to think uh, about you know the these disasters and uh, as a result of the investigation and research uh, the field of fracture mechanics came into picture okay now let us talk about the big disasters first very big disaster that was you know liberty ship okay so the mechanics of uh, fracture that progressed well after world war 2 in 1940s <laughs> so to meet high demand of war what happened U us earlier people like us were manufacturing uh, the ships that called liberty ships they were you know actually riveted uh, they were uh, you know joined with riveted joints but to to increase the production because of the high demand during the world war what what they did they they started manufacturing of cargo ship with all welded hull okay so they they started welded joint instead of riveted joint and they they could make uh, the ship as a single unit okay as a single unit but in a very short span of time approximately you know 400 liberty ships total were made 2700 out of that 400 liberty ships experience sudden unexpected brittle fractures and hence were failed in the cold temperature of the north atlantic ocean okay and even in fact many of them were broken into two pieces the reason being that uh, like like when it was made as a single unit using a welded joint and if there is crack crack were always present and the once the crack propagation start so then crack propagation starts then it would run through the whole ship because it was now a single unit because of the welded joint so that's why once the crack propagation started so it would run through the whole ship and that's why uh, the ship were broken into two pieces as shown here okay you can see here it was broken into two pieces like this yes sir clear yes hello yes Am sir I clear yes sir okay yes sir so this, this this was the very big disaster okay that has happened so they, they could not realize what has happened at that time but this they 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 uh, you know uh, uh, did the investigations and uh, research was done and they they could find out that yes reason is this okay uh how were the ships made by riveting uh, riveting plates did not display such failure why you know when we have two plates okay two plates and they they are you know they are you know riveted joint they are joint using riveted joints right like this and now let us say that there is one crack here and it is propagating propagation of the crack is started okay what will happen is 
like at the joint, you will see that it is not connected. They are separate. Okay. And once the crack will propagate uh, to the, this common uh, point here, so then it will not propagate further. So the crack once nucleated grew into the plate would not grow into another plate. So this is what happened in riveted plate plates, riveted plates. So that's why you know they were safe as compared to welded joints. But in welded structure, being a large single continuous part, the crack once nucleated, nucleated uh, it become critical and it will run through the entire hull of the seed. <coughs> okay. So this is the first, this was the first disaster. The second disaster happened in 1950. The EKSD uh, Havilland comment is the aviation industry's most famous case of crack related aircraft failure. What happened? Three fatal comment one crashes over a 12 month period during 1953 to 1954. That led to the grounding of the entire comet fleet. The crashes were found to be caused by cracks growing from the corner of a scare fuselage window, just shown here. Okay. From the corner of this window, that uh, that acted as you know um, that acted as uh, the point of stress concentration, and from there only cracks was you know grown, okay, and then it caused the failure. The scare corner served as stress raiser, accelerating crack formation and growth in a fuselage stressed by pressurization. Because, because you know that inside low outside pressure, but high inside pressure. So that actually caused pressurization. And, uh, and this pressurization is especially uh, present at the high altitude. And because of that, there were, there were high tensile stresses. And that has had resulted in, you know, the crack propagation from this stress uh, concentration point okay by the time the redesign comment was back in service in 1958 so this this was you know it took four or five years to come back uh, in service but but by that time uh, you know the america this, this this was present in uk but by that time america you know developed this boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8. So that actually captured the attention of public. Okay, so the, then, then supremacy was, uh, supreme, supremacy had moved from UK to America then. So this is one uh, that window, uh, uh, like one picture that, that shows how the crack, uh, you know, initiated from the corner of a window in this uh, after that in 1988 aloha airlines flight 243 okay so that suffered extensive damage following an in-flight ex explosive decompression at 24000 feet okay the plane had accumulated uh, uh, these many flight hours Okay. Okay. So now you look at if you look at this is what has happened. Okay. And remember that it happened in the air. Okay. At, at 24,000 feet height. Okay. Failure was the result of multi-site fatigue cracking of the skin panel adjacent to rivet hole at the lap joint. So, and the situation was compounded by corrosion, countersunk fastener holes forming knife edge 
in the skin and finally deficient inspection and maintenance program uh, on the part of the operator so they all resulted in this failure <coughs> So with the development of large ships made of welded plate and high capacity jet airlines, new problem arose. The predominant question asked were what causes failure? So this was the question that were, you know, uh, that, 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 that were, you know, asked and what causes failure and what can we contain the failure? So this was the second question. Okay. So these questions cause the beginning of the development of a new discipline of engineering called fracture mechanics. So only after that fracture mechanics came into picture. Now if you look at the early fracture research, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, okay, he conducted very fast experiment, fast time and to get some clues, okay, and uh, to the root cause of failure. When he found that the strength varies, uh, varied inversely with the length of uh, iron wire. Okay. Right? The strength in uh, very inversely with the length of the uh, iron wire. <coughs> because, because the reason was that as the you know the size increases. The probability of uh, having a crack in that big size component would be more, right? So because of that, as the length of the iron bar was um, <coughs> increasing, the strength was decreasing, okay? So a, a quantitative connection between the fracture stress crack size came after the work of Griffith. Griffith was the first person who, who you know, uh, who could, you know, relate fracture stress and crack size. And he developed a right idea of energy requirement for the growth of a crack. So what he found was that, like the, he found that to propagate a crack or for the growth of a crack, there is some energy requirement that has to be fulfilled only then the crack will propagate, otherwise not. Okay. So for the growth, growth of a crack, there is some energy requirement that has to be supplied. But uh, Griffith was not able to invent a convenient parameter to predict the load on a component that could cause the growth of a crack. So there were some limitation of the Griffith work. But later on that also, you know, was uh, removed. Subsequent effort to apply the Griffith model to metals were unsuccessful. The initial work of the Griffith was applied to the ideally brittle solids, right? But later on, the modification of Griffith model was uh, made and then it was applied to metals also. And it happens um, after 1948 only. Okay, so this is about certain early research work in the fracture mechanics field. Post-war fracture research. Post, when we look at the post-war fracture research, for all practical purposes, modern fracture mechanics was born in, uh, born in 1948 when George Irwin, Irwin was the second person, he formulated fracture mechanics by devising workable parameter like stress intensity factor and energy release rate. So uh, Griffith was not able to, you know, come out with these para this kind of parameter. But, but Erwin, he, he could, uh, you know, devise these workable parameter, stress intensity factor and energy release rate. So then Erwin's development was mainly for brittle or less ductile material materials but the analysis was conservative for most engineering material. Although he applied it to brittle or less ductile materials, but let, but if he, if he applied to other material, this was considered to be more conservative. Around 1960, the fundamental of linear elastic 
fracture mechanics were fairly well established and researcher turn their attention to corrective plasticity so this is the first time happened like initially they assume that uh, near to the corrective corrective in near to this is the corrective actually near to the corrective uh, uh, the there is no plasticity effect okay because uh, remember when whenever you know uh, load is applied then stresses will be raised near to the corrective to a high value that may induce plasticity okay that may induce plasticity near to the corrective but if that size is size of the plasticity is very small then we can assume that then uh, linear elastic fracture mechanics is applicable otherwise when you know plastic uh, you know size plasticity uh, is there and plastic zone size is very large then we can't uh, we will not be able to neglect it or we will not neglect it then you will have to apply accordingly uh, linear elastoplastic fracture mechanics theory lfm this to be valid when significant plastic deformation precedes failure that is what i told you when plastic deformation uh, happens before final failure then you can't you you cannot neglect the plastic fact so there after other parameter like corrective opening displacement by wells in 1961 and j integrals okay so they came by rice in 1968 they were developed to account for the large plastic zone at the crack tip in ductile material remember that uh, the materials are also going to play important role like for example if it is a brittle material you know that whenever stresses will be raised then it will cause fracture of that material okay there will be no plastic effect so when we talk about brittle material then lfm is applicable but when we talk about ductile materials uh, near to the crack tip plastic effect would be there and that uh, would uh, uh, cause the failure of lfm theory then you will have to talk about elastoplastic fracture mechanics in 1971 wegley and lens referred the rice article to characterize fracture toughness of nuclear pressure vessel steels with the j integral and that led to a standard procedure for j testing of metals so this this all we will be talking later on but you should know what are the um, fracture characterizing parameter crack tip uh, opening displacement j integral stress intensity factor energy release rate so all these parameters will be talking later on in an effort to apply the concept of fracture mechanics to design through a mathematical relationship between the toughness stress and flow size right so so this also will be talking so we'll be um, also talking about relationship between the j integral and the corrective <laughs> opening displacement so all these will be talking <coughs> now we when we talk about the recent trends in fracture research recent trend the field of fracture mechanics has matured in recent years nowadays okay current research trend tends to result in incremental advances rather than major throwback breakthroughs and gains now more sophisticated models for material behavior like time dependent non linear material behavior namely visco plasticity visco elasticity so they are being incorporated in fracture mechanics analysis so remember earlier it was lfm then plastic effects were considered but if you look at the today's research work now people are you know talking about other material behavior like time dependent non linear material behavior like visco plasticity or visco elasticity right and uh, the motivation for this 
the form this viscoplasticity is the need for tough creep resistance high temperature material while the second one viscoelastic uh, elasticity uh, that reflect the increasing proportion of the plastics because you know in uh, plastics visco elastic effects are, effects are more than metals so and the earlier one visco plasticity the with the with the need of you know high resistant high temperature resistant material so the need was felt to consider visco plastic effect as well as visco elastic effect so fm has also been applied in the characterization of composite material okay now composite materials you know there are many application of composite material so so now it is being applied to the composite material also recent research is also focused on the development of microstructural models of fracture and models to relate local and global fracture behavior of materials like like we talk about uh, you know microstructural models of fracture like what happen at micro level okay and relating micro level phenomena with global level phenomena of fracture so this is what uh, recent research is being focused <coughs> so this is what we we talked in strength to material approach if you look at now how that this design approach would be different okay like if you look at the you know strength of material approach you remember the applied stress that uh, we were uh, you know comparing with the, uh, the strength through some criteria right and based on that we were able to design right so this is the strength of material approach or theory of elasticity approach but here in addition to applied stress there are other parameters that would play Role that is a flaw size, that is nothing but crack size, and what is uh, uh, what is fracture toughness, which is nothing but a material property. So based on that only we would be able to tell whether our design is safe or not. Okay, so the design approach is different when we apply fracture mechanics. So not only applied stress we talk about. Uh, we we talk about flaw size, the size of the crack present in the body. At the same time, we talk about uh, material parameter that is fracture toughness. Okay, so so there are two alternative approaches to fracture analysis: energy criteria and stress intensity approach. Uh, these approaches are equivalent in certain circumstances. So this is what we'll be talking. so let me stop here today and i will continue with this and then formally we will start uh, this course so this is a introduction but to get more depth about the topics that we have talked so better would be like you you just go through the google and then you can just study uh, liberty c failure or boston molasses failure okay and similarly other um, major disasters to know the history or the history about fracture mechanics that how it is originated so that you can uh, you know study okay yes sir the book i have told you right so you can purchase it it is a very small book it will cost you nearly i think uh, not more than 3 400 okay yes sir yeah so any question any doubt no sir sir when we talk about a fracture sir it is uh, for a material is just microscopic or macroscopic see we will be talking about uh, you know uh, crack tip near to the crack tip okay near to the crack tip 
actually we study it at macroscopic level only we are not talking about microscopic level okay okay yes okay. so microscopic level means we we are not talking about uh, you know the constituent and all and still we are working with the material at macroscopic level okay sir okay but there are other other uh, yes sir uh, research work so that that um, like uh, that will that may involve microscopic uh, like level also right because always we try to understand that how failure is uh, fracture is happening so once failure has happened at macroscopic level then certainly we would be interested in knowing <coughs> more about how how it has initiated how it has propagated so then certainly you will have to go to the um lower scale maybe micro or maybe nano also yes sir okay yes sir 